Don't no one go into your national no grand set of ten years of after. I do not know. Nobody does. Not even the angels of heaven know. I don't know. But I know it's getting awful near for the signs that he said would be taking place. He said it would be even at the door, and we're getting them right now. I know the next thing to happen is the restoration of the gifts to the church. And it's the hardest thing I've had to do in this pioneering work is to do this, as to see the people that God can not give back the gifts to the church as long as the church is divided. We've got to get the church together first before the gifts can come. But if all of the full gospel people would come one heart and one accord, there would be a revival that would shake the whole world, and every spiritual gift would be in the church within an hour's time after it took place. Signs and wonders that was done by the apostles would be a minor thing. But what would do if we could just get the church together? It's got to happen. It will happen. It may be after I'm passed off the scene, but I want to put my word in this that you might know that my voice is this, oh, Christian people, bind yourselves together with one heart and one accord. For God cannot no more send the gifts to the church while the church is separated than it can send the Holy Ghost unless we're in one accord. That's right. For it comes by the Holy Ghost. Believe it. These claims that I have made about the angel of God, these claims I've made about healing, I don't believe there's a person that's ever been in a meeting but what knows that it is true. Do you believe it? You've seen it before your own eyes. Certainly I've seen people pass over the platform and, and not be healed. There were thousands come before Christ that wasn't healed. He said, I can if ye believe. But many mighty works he could not do because of their unbelief. Come by Jeffersonville and see me sometime, will you? Be glad to have you. Write me a letter. Send it to me if I can just send it to my house. Anytime that I could, you could call me or you're sick, I'll pray for it on the phone. I can't say I could come every time. I used to say, I'll come to you rain or shine. I come down from Canada in about 15 or 18 airplane tickets laying there. Oh, I just wondered that. <laughs> See, you can't go close where you're going to one is another. One year, here's another, and you you don't know where to go to. But I, I love you, and I'm here to help you, and we'll do all that I can for you to try to prove to you that I do love you. God bless each one of you. Now, before going, I wish to read this little piece of scripture before starting in the prayer line. Matthew, the fourth chapter, 23rd and 24th verses. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all spirits, and it brought unto him all the sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, those which were possessed with devils, those which were lunatics, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Now, let's bow our heads just a moment, if you'll ever wear a real audience. I'll be real ready. I want to know, before I start praying, how we do it now. How many of you that's coming in the prayer line would believe if I'll ask God, God will hear my prayer and hear me? Do you believe that? You believe in that? God bless you. Friends, the angel of the Lord told me, if you can get the people to believe you, I'll tell you what you do. When you pass through this line tonight, you go out of here just rejoicing, just as happy as you can be, telling the people that you're here. And go testify. The disciples were ten days and nights in Jerusalem 
constantly praising God before the Holy Ghost ever saw. Father, I thank thee for this, another privilege, for this, even in the third trip to this lovely little city of Phoenix, for the Valley of the Sun, for my heart has yearned to be since a little boy. O oh God, somehow, I pray, God, that you have started a revival in every church there is in the city. Grant it, Lord, and may a great union revival in here. Father, I pray that you will be. I pray that tonight that the angel of God will stand here at this pulpit. And may there not be one passed by this book to watch me. Hear my prayer, Father, as I try to you with a sincere heart, knowing that I'm trying with my whole heart to serve you the best that I know can. And I pray that you'll hear me tonight. Bless Brother Garcia. Oh, I was And there was Caroline. There was an ambulance come up with a woman, and she was right us and told forward. And when I took a hold of her hand, of course, there would be feel a vibration because arthritis was caused by acid. And I had prayer for the woman, and her, her eyes, she seemed to go into a trance. I just passed her on, of course. Then I left and was gone and come back again in a few days, and her husband was at the door. And he said, Brother Branham, he said, something's happened to my wife. She talks like she's delirious. And I said, what seems to be wrong? He said, well, here's what it is. He said, when she was praying, when you was praying for her, she seemed like she was in a trance until we got home. And she asked me, uh, who was that other man that come down there with you when you prayed for her? And I said, there was no other man. I said, oh, yes, the man with a white robe on with dark hair. I said, say that again, brother. And he said it again. And I said, that is the angel of the Lord that appeared. See? She said, while he was looking down upon Brother Brandon when he was praying, and said, he talked to me. And he said, now, you're looking for healing. He said, Brother Brandon's prayer will be answered. You'll be healed. But said, doesn't Brother Brandon look awful frail? Said, but he'll be strong as the while. So that gave me encouragement. See, he'll be strong as the while. Now the woman never heard the story. And she described she said he was a large man, brown, dark face, with black hair hanging down near his shoulder. She said, I seen he come down off the pulpit. And she'd never heard of it in her life. And said, when Brother Branham knelt down to pray for me, then this man looked would come up there instead of praying. He just kept looking down at Brother Brandon and said, he looked around at me and said, now you come for healing and you'll be healed. And then said, now, doesn't Brother Brandon look awful thin? Said, but he'll be strong after a while. And said, then when uh, they started moving the stretch away, he walked out on out the door with him in that place. I've seen him. Now, that's the angel of God. He's been seen many times in the service. And I know that he's here tonight. I know that he's here. I felt him three or four times since I've been here. Now, someone might know. Now, many people misunderstand. Now, this is in no means, friend, uh, an angel worship. It is not. I do not pray in the name of the angel or even know his name. But if you'll check the scriptures, when God sends his people, it's an angel that directs them. Moses. You say, well, how about the New Testament? Certainly, it was always the angel of the Lord. That's right. Peter, when he was in prison, the angel of the Lord came down. Is that right? Delivered him. And oh my, many times, he said, how about Paul, when he come over to Macedonia, when he was on the shipwreck, the angel of the Lord appeared to him that night and told him he'd given them all into his hands. Certainly, it's always Paul never worshiped the angel. John, the revelator, after the whole book of Revelation was written, 
Then John said, I fell at the feet of the angel. Is that right? That showed me these things. He said, worship God. He was of his fellow man and of the prophets. See? Notice. God always sends down the supernatural upon the natural. Like upon the brazen serpent, the pool, and so forth. Even Jesus himself, he never took credit for healing anybody. Is that right? He said, it's not me that doeth the work. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. The doctors knew he was there. I went to all the sympathy to the family. And starting out of the house, the wife screaming and crying of a man. And as I saw that door, a human hand seemed touched me by the arm. And I felt it hold me. And as I started forward, I could not move. I turned back, the hand left me. I went to the bedside and looked down upon the man. There was a Methodist minister's wife in the room and another sister. And I started to have prayer. When I come to myself, I was laying on this man's body. The dead man had a sheet over his face for at least a half hour. My face was laying not against him, and I was calling out into the spirit land. Brother Elijah, his name is Elijah. Brother Elijah, calling out into the land for his spirit not knowing what I was doing. In a few moments, I laid still, calling. I felt that man's hand coming up around my ear. The man is working on the Pennsylvania Railroad tonight alive. Now, God knows that's true. If it isn't, he would let me pass away from this pulpit right now. But that don't mean that everybody could be I can do nothing within myself. I have to act as that angel says, act. But when you say, the what is in need of meaning, and your very, notice, the thing that you're seeking after is already in the deposit box of heaven for you. Christ, he was wounded for our transgressions, and with his stripes we are healed. Is that right? See, it's already made. Just like if I say, here, if I gave you a postal check or money order that called for $5,000, well, you say, is that money order any good? Certainly. If the government is any good, why then are the, the one that wrote the money order, the whole government, before that money order could be written, there had to be $5,000 deposit first before that money order could be written. Is that true? The deposit has to be made first. Well, be, now look, the deposit or your healing was put in God's medicine cabinet or his bank on the day of the crucifixion of Calvary. You see what I mean? Then he was wounded for our transgressions and with his stripes we are healed and your healing is done, bought, and paid for. Oh my. It's yours. All you have to do is just reach out and get it. Now, in order that people would see and know God promised that he would send gifts. Is that right? There's nine spiritual gifts promised to the body. That is the body of believers. It's not for the unbeliever. Divine healing is not for you who do not believe. It's for those who believe. The Holy Ghost. It's not for those who do not believe in it. It's for those who believe it. Now, a few years ago, when the Holy Ghost, had, before it came, and the church began to get formal back under the days of Methodists, and you people cried to God for deliverance, and God sent down the baptism of the Spirit. Now, since then, people have been liberated from their sins by receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Now, those who do not believe in it, they can't receive it. You've got to believe in it. Therefore, he sent anointed preachers to preach the word. And you received it, and now you receive. How many years receive the Holy Spirit? Let's see your hand. 
Now oh, that's fine. My, look at that, almost 100 percent. Wonderful. Oh, my, we ought to be able to do anything. <laughs> that's right. Why, wow, there's nothing now. Uh, that much believers in here that receive the Holy Ghost. Wow, there ought to be a feeble person among you in the next few hours. That's right. What do you think about sister on a cot? you believe that's so? All right. Now, notice, if you can believe, now, many of the miracles that's performed, I always see them in my room in prayer before it comes to the building. How many, all of you in here have heard how the gift of healing comes in the head, and most all of you have seen it. Oh, sold it last time you knew about. You still believe it? Oh, that's just fine, that's fine. Now, we want to read just a little out of the Word here and teach it just for a few moments, and then we'll get ready for the service, for the healing service. Now, this was during the time of the early ministry of the Master. He had been healing the people everywhere, and his fame had won out. Now, if the people would have doubted him that he was the Son of God, that he was the healer divine, they could have not been healed. Even his prayer for them would have not have healed them. His hand would have not have, laying upon them would have not have healed them. Jesus never took credit for healing anyone. He said, Thy faith has made thee whole. Is that right? Thy faith has saved thee. A woman once touched the hem of his garment. Then everybody won't touch the hem of his garment. And you notice in the meeting, you'll hear people say, I hear my, I'll tell somebody maybe under inspiration, go up the street or go up the corner, throw down your crutches. Then the next thing comes to you, they, Brother Bram, tell me to do so. See? They just keep whatever they see somebody else doing. Well, friends, if somebody in here now could just raise right up and touch Christ by faith, it's like the rest of you could. Here the other night, I might make this statement. It was just like we, we were in Miami, and it really is a city of confusion. There's all kinds of doctrines and everything that falls around the nation comes in there, everywhere. And when coming in, I was trying, they said people wouldn't come out, but they, they did. They come to the meeting, uh, a thousand. But here's what happened. In the service one night, we were had to hurry, for we had several hundreds to pass through the line. And we brought up first a few deaf, dumb, maybe, I believe, a blind man, a few things like that that were performed. It was in the last night, there were two boys born blind, without sight, all their lives, received their sight. And different things of that type, which was having a hard struggle of it because there was such a confusion amongst the churches because many people come into those places and they just break up churches, go and start their own church. It's hard to get to the people that were not wanting to start a church. We're trying our best to get the church together. That's what we need. Don't you believe that? We need cooperation together. And then in that, I was praying for people coming along like that. And the first thing, uh, someone now, faith had begun to drop in the line you could feel it. And that's one thing that I believe in, in the Spanish people. You're humble, you're willing to receive or just take the from whatever you, you come in that attitude and that's the reason you get healed. That's the reason you get healed because you come humble. Anyone who comes stiff neck will never receive nothing from God. You've got to see how low that you can get, and then Christ will heal you. That's right. Or he'll save you. He'll give you the Holy Ghost if you just believe. Now, you can death to him, not he to you, and then you will receive from him. Then, while it's praying, I have my back turned to the audience of several hundreds of people. And I was praying like this to people coming through the line. Once in a while, I'd have to stop them because it seemed like they wouldn't have faith to come to be healed then. And while I was praying, I felt something. I turned around, I said, a crippled person is healed somewhere because I felt it. And in a few moments, I said, some crippled person, I heard somebody scream out back there. He's a young businessman in the city sitting there with his wife. He had a crippled arm. And there he was with his arms up in the air, I thanking God. 
And he told us then that he had sat there and he said, I wanted to get into his service. I've been there for two or three nights. But said, I couldn't get in amongst those people. So many of them are so much need. And I said, oh, God, if that's your gift, you heal me. And that quick his faith went out, you see. And with my back turned to him, I felt it move. I, then he raised up. My friends, that wasn't me. But that proves that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Or he turned around and said, who touched me? Is that right, Brother Barber? <laughs> now, those things here in a meeting, one night there I was standing, I heard a spirit pass by me, a choking spirit. I felt it come back again. In a few moments, it was a teal auditorium. There's 14,000 people in there. And I said, somebody with a guard or a teal, or the spirit just passed by here. And I said, frankly, here it comes by again. And it, as it passed by, I heard it strangling. That may almost drown some of you. But it's... I know there's lots of things that said that's not true, but there is a true God who heals. That's right. And when it went by, I made an announcement of it again. And I said, somebody look through the line. Somebody see with the garbage. And up in the second balcony, I heard somebody scream out. I said, Brother Brandon, it's I. And it was the post-dispatch reporter up there with the newspaper. A garter, inward garter he'd had for years, left him. He said the whole thing illuminated around there with the power of God. See, when his face, he come over there to criticize. He give us the full page right up and everything to pay for the next day. He come to criticize. But when he began to see God working and seeing what God was doing, he himself believed. And then when it did, God rewarded him, and he never even had to get into the prayer line. He was healed up in the second balcony. Oh, my. Tell me he's not the same yesterday, today, and forever. His power is unlimited. And he can do the same thing even this very moment. Now, look. We're all here to want to be, you want to be well. And the more deeper you get into this, the better off you're going to be. Don't come haphazard about it. Come with a sincere heart, believing with all your heart, and receive your healing heart and healing. That's the way you do it. Now, don't come halfway believing it. Now, remember, I'm here, and these claims that I make about vibration, about these things, how many in this meeting has been in my other meeting has seen deaf, dumb, blind, crippled, and so forth heal us in? How many have seen people told of their diseases and told of their sins and things of vibration? How many have seen that? Now, if I make these statements, and, there, and I just make them myself, there's nothing that that happens, then don't believe it because my words will be untrue. But if I make those statements and God backs that up, then that's God's testimony to it. Is that right? That's God's testimony saying it is true. Well, then if God says it's true in confirming the word with signs and wonders following, isn't that what you prayed for for years? Well, my, my. I believe we could be healed right now. Sure. I like to feel that welcome spirit coming back like that. That, that feels wonderful. <laughs> All right. Now to read some of the words. Now, this is the, uh, the nobleman's son was healed. Now, we won't take it a few moments of time so we get right into the healing service. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And this nobleman, his son, was supposed to preach on that a few moments ago or something. <laughs> was he? <laughs> All right, I just wondered if I'd touch somebody else's text. Anyhow, he had returned now into, out of, into Galilee where he had performed one miracle. And now he was returning back again. And that miracle he performed then was at the wedding, of course, of Canaan when he made the water wine. And he was a young man, <clears throat> rather come up with a very poor environment. And today, if Jesus had never been thought of in the world, he had never been here, and would come on the scene today they would probably class it right down with a bunch of fanaticism. 
Is that right? Now remember, there was many, many hundred Jesus put Jesus children were passed from us. All right, then a little later from that, the lady gave her place up to two or three people. And then after a while, the line comes at the end of the service where it was no more miracles. It was the fast line. And when she seen the great multitude of people, she just absolutely didn't have the heart enough to come anyhow. Seeing the rest of them and her cripple on her foot. And she said, Lord, I know that that 120-pound man can heal people. But I know that your angel is there because your words are confirmed. And she said, I believe you now. And her foot comes straight. She raised up and said, Brother Bram, I don't need my crutch anymore. And laid it down and walked out as good as anybody. Why? She had preferred. She was humble. She was willing to wait. She was willing to do anything. And that's what God respects. Is that right? Preferring one another. That's right. Now this man here, look at him. How humble he was. Said to him, now Jesus gave him a rebuke. He said, oh, well, and except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. We're supposed to believe where we see any signs or wonders at all. Is that right? But now watch. He tried him out there. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. My, what a feeling. Could you imagine your son dying and coming out to see the man now to praise the sick? The man told him, Well, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. Now look how humble he got. He said, But, sir, uh, come down or my child will die. I watched what Jesus said. Now he could have went. But he's seen the faith. He's seen the humility. He's seen that the man knew what he was speaking of. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Oh, my. There you are. Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man, V E L I V E D. He believed. Now he come for him to go down to his house to pray for the child. But Jesus didn't go. He said, Thy son liveth. And the man believed it. Now that's what I listen to the rest of the story. The word that Je believe the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was going down, his servant met him and said it unto him, told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Listen to this now. Oh my, I like this. Then inquired, which inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And he said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed. There you are, when it's cut together. All right. And his whole household. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he came out of Judah into Galilee. Notice. Now he wanted him to go with him to pray for his son, and he did not go. But he said, Thy son liveth. And the man believed it. Now, if the man had not believed it, it would not have been so. But Jesus had already questioned to him to know that he had faith enough. Many of his notice in the meeting when the line's passing through. Once in a while you find one that's got faith. You stop for that person just a moment, just enough to spurn that faith up just a little, and there it takes a hold. See, if you can get them to believe. Now, the one, the hardest thing that God has ever had to do is to get one mortal to believe another. It would be easy if that angel that spoke to me was standing here on the pulpit tonight telling you this while you run up to him and worship him. You want to fall down to his feet. He was standing here looking the way that I've seen when he comes. Great, stern man standing there. I know how I feel. But friend, I've never done nothing in my life, any miracle, any of these miracles, these 21 months that have been out, for thousands of them has been performed. I've never performed one of them. He is the one who does that. See? He's the one. I don't have nothing to do with it. He's the one. I'm just a mouthpiece for him. I just speak what he said. How would I know when people had faith and people who did not have faith? And how would I know what you've done 10 years ago or 20 years ago? I would not know that. It's God. So the hour has come for the repeat of the Bible. 
and the fulfilling of the word. Now, God promised that he was going to send a former rain and a latter rain. And he promised the former and the latter rain in the latter rain. In other words, a double portion, like the uh, garment of Elisha. When Elijah dropped it, Elisha picked it up and had a double portion. He was a type as a type of the church and Christ. Christ was taken up. And the same spirit that was up on Christ is on the church tonight, the Holy Ghost. See? Nevertheless, if you see me go away, said Elijah. And he took the garment and stuck the Jordan and said, Let the God of Elijah speak. Now notice, the church tonight, supposedly, you're supposed to keep her eyes on Christ. 120 did. When he was taken up and he went into the upper room, you say, was that the same spirit that was on Christ? The woman asked one day, he said, let my son set the rock while I had no left in your kingdom. He said, can you drink the cup that I drink? The persecution and so forth? Yes. Can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? She said she could. He admitted that she could. And that baptism was the Holy Ghost. And then... He said, yes, but the right and left hand is not mine to give but the Father. But notice, we were also speaking to Dr. Bosworth a few moments ago about St. John 5, 19, where he said there that when he healed the man at the pool and he went up and the Jews were questioning, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son doeth nothing in himself for what he sees the Father doing, that doeth he also. See? Now notice, he passed by that pool there for there was probably 10,000 people in. Now, when the Bible said great multitudes, that meant many people did be. Maybe 10,000 people of lame, blind, halt, and all kinds of people in there. Deaf, dumb, lunatic. And he went to a man that had an infirmity for 28 years. And he said, Sir, would you be made whole? And he said, I have no one to put me in the water. And when I'm going to the water, see, he could walk. When I'm going to the water, somebody a little better off than I am steps down before me. He said, take up your bed and go into your house. Now the man never questioned him. He just obeyed. And obedience is better than sacrifice. Is that right? He never said, well, who are you to tell me that? He just obeyed what he was told to do, picked up his bed. Now, why didn't he go to some of the blind and the lame in the hall? It's because uh, he, wasn't, he didn't look any different from any other man. He didn't dress any different from any other man. Now that's one, anybody, you can, you can minister and so forth, they can dress any way they want to. Someone was asking here a few days ago, many of you have heard of ABAC, you know, they come over here that time. Well, we've been trying to meet each other for some time. We met a few days ago in Florida. They put our pictures together and said, well, American Army can <laughs> consult design healing. Anyhow, some of, well, he, he, he was a man that had long beard and long hair. So what, that's his own opinion. That's, that's perfectly all right. If you want to dress that way or be that way, that's all right. But that doesn't make you yes or no. It's the condition of your heart before God what makes you what you are. That's right. Now, when he passed through, he was just Jesus. He was just a normal dressed man. And he went through the crowd. He's seen that man. Not nothing to be conspicuous to look at. He just said, would you be made whole? He said, I have no one to put me water. He said, take up your bed and walk. And he did. And then when he was questioned, then he told him that the Son of Man could do nothing except what he's seen the Father doing before. Now here, he come into the Canaan again, and a certain nobleman's boy was sick. Now look, 47 verse. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. Now notice, when he heard, notice that third, third verse there in the 47th verse, when he heard Jesus was come back into the country where he had performed a miracle, he come to him for his son, for his son was near death. Get it? He knew he could do it, for he'd already performed one miracle there. Well, if he's performed one miracle, would cause that nobleman 
to believe that his word would heal his son, then why can't we believe when he's performed hundreds of miracles here before us? <laughs> you see what I mean? Notice how many was here the morning that woman passed away there on the, this Miss Hattie Waldorf here. Is that lady here, in the, Miss Hattie in here tonight, Mrs. Waldorf? Well, here she is right here. That passed out here with the cancer of the heart, colon, and liver. She's a living, isn't she? <laughs> Very much, aren't you, sister? There you are. Her doctor's got the x-rays here and so forth. Now, here we are coming back tonight in the same city where the lady that was laying here dead with cancer is alive tonight. And this is the second miracle. It's, oh my, the second, it's dozens up on top of dozens of them, Mr. Farm. Is that right? Now watch. The nobleman, he brought his son. He came here, couldn't bring his son, but he just come to him. And he said, now, you come down to pray for my son. I watch the face come up on you. He heard that he done it. Now, how many's heard that Jesus healed in the last meeting here? Let's see your hand. How many knows he healed in the last meeting here? Now here's the proof of it here. How many was healed in the last meeting here? Let's see your hand. Now there you are. Now you can't deny it. Well, now if one miracle was done in Canaan, calls the man to come down and believe on Christ, how many more in Arizona ought to come tonight? Is that right? And believe because look how many more has been healed. Now, notice here now, in the 48th verse, Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. In other words, give him a rebuke to see if he was able to send it. Now, you know what would happen in Phoenix tonight if the master was here and say something other like that? Why, well, my, did go up and walk away. Why, well, you don't have to come. But that fellow wasn't that kind of a fellow. He was a humble man. The main thing was to get Christ to his boy. But you see, a people who take the attitude of saying, well, uh, they feel like they'd be preferred before somebody else. They don't get nothing from God. Those who's willing to step back, those who's willing to, to give, prefer one another, that's the one who gets something from God. A little lady here the other night in a certain meeting, she was back there and she was crippled. <clears throat> she walked on a crutch. And she had come her time, her number of her cards. And she seen the lady sitting back there with a cancer. She sent in the after this, the Holy Ghost has come up on you, and you'll be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. And that included Phoenix, Arizona. That's right. March the 4th, 1948. Then his power is still the same tonight as it was the day that he poured it out upon the church. Then you people who tasted the rims of the golden cup of his blessing, how could you believe anything else but what the Holy Ghost is here tonight to heal everyone or to fill everyone here? My, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, his power is the same. He's unlimited, his power is this. I could stand here tonight, testimony after testimony, hour after hour, of telling you what he's done. But one testimony from him healing somebody will speak louder than I could have spoke for 50 years. That's right. Let him speak and let us be silent. And he can speak. Now, every one of you is well instructed to know how this comes. It must be perfect reverence. It must be eyes closed, heads bowed. For it's not a no way. This is not an arena. And it's the house of God. And it's a place where we should respect Christ. And then here is something else. If any person that's coming in the prayer line. Let me sternly warn you. If you're aiming to come in the prayer line, do not come until first you give your heart to Christ. Then do not stop at that. After you've repented and been baptized, tarry until you have received the baptism of the Spirit. Friend, I say this reverently. I realize I haven't got long to stay here. None of us have. We're nearing the end. Now, everyone knows that. There's not a person here tonight over 14 years old. 
But what knows that we're nearing something? And I wish you would listen to this. Surely, if God by my prayers will open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of the deaf, and make the lame walk, surely I ought to know something about what I'm speaking of. We're near the end. That's right. And you young people, are you old who's out of Christ? Oh, God help you, friend. Now's the time. This is the hour. If you haven't got the Holy Ghost, receive it now. For those that are in Christ will God bring with him. The rest of them will go under the judgment. If you're not in Christ tonight, hear my word. For only those that are in Christ will go in the rapture. Tonight, if you're not ready, be prepared. And if you come into the prayer line, a sinner, you, can you say, can a sinner come? Yes, sir. A sinner can come. But when God touches your body, if you don't stand, come into Christ, look for a worse thing than that to follow you right away. Here a few weeks ago, a woman came into the line. There's somewhat, the newspapers give us an awful write-up about the ambulances blocking the streetcar tracks and things. And the lady, I went to touch her hand before I could touch her hand. She said, I have cancer. I took over her hand. I said, not cancer, sister, but you've got cancer. She had around I 10 or 12, and they were hitting from different parts, and my hand rolled quickly. The vibrations running over it. And she said, can anything be done for me? I said, if you can believe. <laughs> but if I should rebuke it and send it away, and if you doubt it, it will return back. And if you do not serve Christ, then it will return back. I said, I perceive that you're not a Christian. She said, no, I'm not. Then when she looked at me in the eye, might as well tell you this because many of the people already know it. Well, sometimes when I get catch your eye, that's how I get them in that channel, you see. And it's not a mind reading. It's not psychology. If it is, then Paul used it. When he looked up on the man and said, I perceive you have faith to be healed. I will grant you this. It is psychology in this way. If psychic, of course, means mind. And it's the mind of Christ. That the human being has the privilege to enter in and know the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. My, what a, a reality to dwell in the channel of Christ. We unworthy mortals have been brought into these sons and daughters of God to be fellow citizens. In oh, my, I get to shout and I get to notice into that realm where even angels can't come. Angels? Yes, sir. We're sons and daughters. Angels are servants. That's right. The servants cannot go where sons and daughters go. They can't enter into that relationship for their servants. And we're sons and daughters. Notice, and this woman, looking at her, I perceived that she was a cigarette smoker. And I told her, I said, now you smoke cigarettes. She said, yeah, I said, you forsake them. And you give your heart to Christ. She said, what church should have joined? I said, oh, that's not for me to tell you. That's for you to seek out. But if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, you receive the Holy Ghost and go to some full gospel church that preaches and believes in divine healing and the Holy Ghost. Lay there a little while. I said, will you do it? She promised. When she did, the vibrations left my hand in a few moments. as the first rebuke of the cancer. And I picked it up. The doctor just gave her a few days to live. And the woman got up. She went around. She'd done her work. She'd done her neighbor's work. Still smoking those cigarettes. And she belonged to, joined the church before that. She had belonged to the church of, uh, the, and even her pastor, if he understood the scriptures right, if anybody got healed of God, that they should forsake their sins and told her she should quit smoking and cigarettes. Another reverend of a gospel minister in the city went over to her and warned her not to do it. And she said, well, I just can't give them up. Said, that's not what you promised, Brother Brown and Almighty God. 
And the woman died a few nights after the last time the minister visited her with a heart attack. See? Oh, my. Don't sin no more. Now, if you do sin, as soon as you sin, you have an advocate, of course. But I mean, don't walk out there and go following the same path you follow because the worst thing's coming up on you. Remember, if my voice is right before God to heal the sick, it's right to warn you. Because you look for a worse thing. Why did this lady here with cancer of her heart and colon liver? Why, abscess on your liver would kill you. And she had cancer. Why is she living now when she passed out of this life right out there on the street? How is she living? Because she purposed in her heart she would serve Christ the rest of her days. And that's why even her doctors and things, why she's living here in Phoenix tonight, to walk up and down the streets to glorify God because she's not ashamed of it. She'll tell anybody about it. That's right. See? She's serving God. Now, if you're in that condition, purpose in your heart, you're going to serve God from the night on. No matter if you're a sinner, when you're here at the healed, you fall right down to the altar and give your heart to Him right then. And then receive the Holy Ghost. Come up here and come into the church or wherever church you prefer. But remember, make it a church that believes in divine healing and the full gospel because some of them others will pump poison into you. You will lose your experience after all. That's right. You go somewhere where it's really full gospel people who believe in the coming of Christ. I believe the separating times here now. Let him that's filthy be filthy still. Let him that's holy, holy still. The hour is come when God's drawing the separating line. That's right. The church is near to be the rapture. Now, friends, we've got about an hour and 15 minutes for prayer now for this church. Now, if any of you can, wait. Don't rush in tonight. Now, listen to me. Remember, I love you with all my heart. I want to see you well. And that's why I'm here for you now, to see you well. I give up my vacation of rest to come here to pray for you, because I love you. Now, I promise you, Spanish people, I will come back. And if a man's not as good as his word, he is no good. Okay. And no matter for my own thoughts, I was morally obligated to do so. And I wanted to come back. I love you with all my heart as well tonight. I felt your record of hearing you singing. Sister Garcia sang a song there solo. In many hours when I'd be away off somewhere in Canada up in those fields. My, my. All so tired. Sometimes in our service I would have as many as one night 35,000 people. Right? There, and on Sunday afternoon alone, 1,800 came to the altar and 1,000 gave their heart to Christ. And that night, 500 received the baptism of the Holy Ghost at one time. John. Now, he's here to save, he's here to heal. And a lot of times I've been going through now the speaking of divine healing. But it's getting to be very essential that I speak to you about your soul also. Or you've got a soul that's going to meet God, you know. And you must be ready. Wonder why we bow our heads. One of the sisters here, the pianist, one of them, the book of piano. Play only believe for me, just a minute. Piano player. <clears throat> Thank you, brother. I wonder why you're sitting here now. You know why. Where are you going to be a year from tonight? Where are you going to be 500 years from now? You know why? Probably somewhere the sand will blow across your tombstone and your soul will be somewhere in the tomb. You know that. Is that right? Or where are you going to be a year from tonight? You may be the same way. Where are you going to be tomorrow night? You may be in the same way. I wonder why we bow our heads now to pray for the Christian. Please, everyone. Father, this great hour has come again now. 
or the healing of the sick. Many times a tribe struggles with healing. The healing is somehow, some way. Down in this little desert town here where there seems to be great confusion amongst the people. But you have a church, a ring. You're calling now. Oh, eternal God, the author of life. Speak now, just at this time. Maybe there'll be someone in here tonight who does not know me in the pardon of his sin. There'll be that person, Father, who's right at our door. The great march of the Antichrist has started. Oh, God, have mercy. Grant and I have become lost, wavered, boy, girl, man or woman, who might seek me in the pardon of their sin. While you have your head bowed, I just want to. Does an unsaved person just raise your hand to go down? I want you to pray for me. I want to say it. I'll do it like that. Unsaved person, God bless you again. You see on the outside, you there and you and you. And someone, God bless you, sister. You, sister. God bless you, young man. Come on over here. God bless you, little lady. God bless you, my brother. Come on over to my right now. Say, Brother Brandon, remember me. I'm certainly in need of Christ. I'm needing tonight. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, little girl. And you, young lady. Someone else back there. Oh, God bless you, my brother. All friends, don't you see? We need an old-fashioned revival. We need an old-fashioned mourner's bench in the place for God bless you, boy. God bless you, brother. And you, brother. Yeah. Now is the time, even right now, friends. Standing here, kind of tired tonight. I feel the Holy Spirit moving over the field. Bound to me. What would bring conviction in human heart? Realizing we may be in the grave this time next week. A little boy playing on the steps here a few days ago, standing up, fell in the irrigation ditch, and a few hours later, they pulled him out in a little sore head. Thanks, man. Just how quick you can just go out and eat God. Oh, Father, tonight thou would see the hands of those who love thee and want to be saved. God, there's going to be a, a number of people come out of this babbling confusion to come into the kingdom. All this great dark hour, when the nations are breaking, Israel awakening, the signs that the Bible foretold. Oh, God, have mercy. I pray just now, while they're sitting there, that you will speak a pardon peace to their soul. Then it's God. May they not go to bed tonight until they're on their knees there, crying and saying, God have mercy upon me, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. I believe that you're sending your warning voice. And I want to be saved. God bring it. May they humbly come to thee and be saved. For we ask that in the name of our God, Son, and Jesus Christ. If there's an unbeliever, do not stay in the building. I'm not a preacher. I come to the face of the sick. And everything will seem real reverent now. You mothers with your children close to you. You know what happens. You've seen it in meetings before. Sometimes these demons come right out and go right out into these people. And they just go from one to another. And they follow up meeting after meeting, trying to get into the prayer. I don't know when going overseas may be my last time to ever be in Phoenix. So I, I don't know. And I want to help you that well, I know this. So when I leave here, that you all will say to me, please, Jesus sent me. And I'm going to do all that I can for you. I've got to have your cooperation. Now look, what's the matter with the sister? Is that your... Okay. Now look, sister. No doubt for what you've tried many things to get well. There were some lepers set at the gate one time begging the city was to feed their children. They said, what are we set here for God? If we go into the city, there was nothing to eat there. They were starving. They were eating one of the children. 
And if it's set there, it would die still. He only had one opportunity. That was go down to the enemy's camp. And if they said, if they kill us, we would go die. Because we would go die seven years. We'd go back to the Lord die. We'd seven years to go to die. If we go down there, if they kill us, why we would just be out of misery because we would die anyhow. But if they do have mercy on us, why they are out, we'll live. And they went down there and thought upon the merits of that kind of faith, rewarded them, and caused a great rumble to come up on the desert. And they thought the Israel had hired some more soldiers to come. And they ran away and they went into the tent and found life, food, wine, and even not only saved their own lives, but the city's life. Now tonight, I'm not asking you to come to the house of an enemy. I realize it's too birthday, and we're in this lovely place here, it works a half the time. And the way that you are, and you're the two birthday, you're sure to die. That's fine. You realize that. Now, you, you, you believe in God, do you? Now, if you have believed in God, you believe in me. That that angel of God came down and told me that. You heard the story of that, you sisters? You ever hear the story how it comes? The angel of the Lord came down. Yes. If I was studying in the room, since a boy, I had a calling on And I was studying in the room, but he not on the floor. A supernatural being come walking in the room. An angel said he was sent in the presence of God. He said, if you get the people to believe in you, you'll be sincere when you pray. Nothing shall stand before you pray, not even the truth. Then you'd ask me, does everybody get well, Brother Brown? Everybody that truly believes gets well. Thousands of been here. You liberated me. That's your life, is it? I know I think how I would feel if that was mine. Frankly, one day, my wife laid me. That's the reason I hate that demon. He hates me. He's the one who tore my family up years ago. He cut for me the dearest of earth. And that's the reason today, when I have power over him, uh, I'd like to see him grow away. And I, I'll tell you, my dear brother, we may never meet again in life. If your dear wife will believe with her heart that this angel came and told me this, your wife will be a well healthy woman. I believe, sister. Of all you know. You'll be able with your own strength to rise up from that. Walk down out of the building and leave your pocket. Tomorrow you'll be about your work. Like the lady here that passed away right there as a cancer. Now it's no harder for God to heal through birth than it is with a cancer. But as soon as the vibrations left, the cancer died, the woman rose and believed God and went on. She believed what I told her. Is that right, sister? She believed what I told her. The cancer germ died right in her. And her doctor, he may be in the building tonight, he sent for me to come and said he'd like to shake my hand. He wanted to show me the x-rays of the woman. All right. Now, if she can be, can't she? I got a letter from a minister here on that morning here at the Spanish church. I got it on file. It's pictured before and after. He was standing here with two birthdays. One of the most hideous looking sights. He couldn't hardly breathe. He's so weak. And he was healed right here. And I got his, his testimony with the doctor's record, signed three or four doctors' names, and he was like that. This is perfectly well. In the same Only that, hundreds of x rays. And you're going to see one of those. Um, in the meetings, there's somewhat about 70 to 80 percent. The pastors of the prayer line we hear a seal within the space of 90 days are well. It's 30 percent, it doesn't. Now uh, you'll be on one of those signs. It's the only 70% now. God bless you. Now while the brother is complaining, go to Brother Joseph. Where is he at? Okay. I don't go to Joseph to pick up the prayer cards because he doesn't know. Uh, but he can't speak Spanish to pronounce his word. Now I tell you why I want the rest of you do. If you're an unbeliever, now you remember in this last meeting, I hear in this auditorium. The man may be in the building here tonight, but that demon come upon him when he stood and said that was psychology right here in Phoenix. 
and the men come on down to the west trying to get into meetings. And the last night, Santa Rosa, his wife come there and caught Brother Brown on, almost fell across the path where we were walking. And there her husband sitting under his eyes pulled out a phoenix man. The phoenix there was in. There's a man here in the building tonight, if y'all raise your hand. And there, in the over 45 minutes in there with the man, then the demon come from him. He was in his right mind and he came back home. He said it's psychology, but a few days he got had a funny feeling coming up on him. And there he went walking around. The police picked him up here in the city. Now, if you're a believer, stay in the building. If you're not, you're not. That's outside wherever you are. And you keep your head down and you hear me call. This is not a fanaticism, you know. Oh, get that. It's not a fanaticism. God will have us to answer the day of judgment. Is that right? For the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed. And I've told you, God before has performed it, and you be real reverent and keep your head down. And you hear my voice on this mic, you won't say raise your hand. And I'll, if anything should happen, a miracle, I have no controls of miracles. Then what, my gift is not miracle. My gift is healing. All of you understand that, don't you? Use my spiritual gift. But many times, the angel of God will perform miracles. How many remember down at the auditorium here that day, not long ago, when I stood there and was making a challenge, bring anything up in a miracle line, preach myself down under conviction, come to the platform and ask God if, if it was his will for me to, to bring the people up to heal every one man that come to the head in the miracle line. But if it wasn't his will, if that angel had met me up there and told me not to do that, then to stop it. And how many remember what happened? Was it the auditorium? Even a man with hard of hearing went all the way dead. A little girl, same way. Is that right? That's right. Now, you see, I watch. And I feel perfect leading of the Holy Spirit when I speak. Now, today I've been all, we've been up visiting around the city, taking my wife and I'm around the city. Now, notice, tomorrow I'm going to stay in prayer. I'll probably know more about it tomorrow night. But tonight, you just in the prayer line now. You, you, Brother Joey, will tell you how to form the line. And you come up one by one. And now I will promise you this. By the help of God, I'll pray for every sick person passing through this door before I receive you. I'll do everything I can. I, I mean to pray for you. Come by and pray for you. The very best that I know how before I leave the city. Now, do you believe these things that I told you? This is a prayer side over here. The one coming to prayer line here. Do you believe these things are true? Do you believe they're true? And uh, if I'll ask God sincerely with all my heart, do you believe him the same way with all of you? Do you get well? Do you believe that? All right. I want everybody to bow to Father, I pray thee to send your angel now. And let thy servant not speak now. But let the angel of God, who met me that night in the room, and told me these things, that stood by me these 20 minutes, I pray that he will stand by me tonight. And may he take the things of God, and keep them through that church. In the midst of all of it, you're going to give me the picture. I'm trying once more now. So I'm coming in the name of Jesus, or oh, help me. And I'll give all praise and glory to you for the act of Jesus. Can you raise your hand? All right, step in the room for prayer. All right. Habla español. Para que confíen en que Dios está levantando sus siervos y le está dando dones. Deben ustedes creer que nuestro hermano Benham es un siervo de Dios. Que Dios lo ha mandado y que lo va a usar de una manera especial en esta noche. Gloria al Señor. Porque la misericordia de Dios se está manifestando en, los, en estos últimos días. Cuando la humanidad doliente, cuando el hombre vive, aunque alejado de Dios, pero Dios se recuerda de ellos. Así que si alguien recibe de Dios la sanidad, busque a Dios, le sirva a Dios, tema a Dios, 
como acabamos de oír en este momento, cuando una persona vive en el vicio, podemos entender que es necesario limpiarnos nuestro espíritu, nuestra alma y también nuestros cuerpos, para poderle servir al Señor nuestro Dios. Que el Señor bendiga su obra en esta noche. Que todos confiados, llenos de fe, llenos de confianza, puedan venir a este lugar humillados, humildes, y obedezcan la voz del Señor en esta noche. Si en verdad confían en el Señor, el Señor va a darle sanidad a todos los que crean en el Señor Jesucristo. Gloria a Dios. Así que Dios bendiga su obra y tenemos también que recomendarles a todos ustedes que como nuestros hermanos ven, ven en vida, así vamos a terminar el servicio en el nombre del Señor. Que Dios los guarde. O de grande trascendencia. Es necesario orar constantemente. La oración es el acercamiento a Dios, el cambio de todas las cosas. Todos deben orar constantemente. Y quiero invitar a todas las personas de habla español que mañana a las 10 de la mañana tenemos servicio y si alguien desea ayunar, quiere consagrar su vida al Señor, quiere recibir de Dios la sanidad, puede venir mañana a las 10 en de la mañana y también en la noche tendremos servicio en este lugar como acaba de anunciar nuestro hermano Bennett. Tenemos gozo en esta noche y esperamos que Dios bendiga. Gloria al Señor. Vamos a pedir a Dios con todo nuestro corazón que todos los enfermos van a ser sanos en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. Que ninguno de los que van a, ser, van a orar por ellos va a irse otra vez pensando que está enfermo. Esta es oración de fe. Gloria a Dios. Es sanidad de fe. Gloria a Dios, su nombre. Porque la palabra de Dios dice que sin fe es imposible agradar a Dios. Porque el menester que el que Dios se llega, crea que le hay y que es los de los que le buscan. Después de que terminen con estos hermanos que están eh, con sus números, después seguirán los demás y nuestro hermano Benen va a orar por todos por la ayuda del Señor. Tenemos mucho gozo en esta noche, yo en parte. Estoy seguro, hermanos, que el Señor va a bendecir su pueblo. Ya ven cuántos han recibido el Espíritu Santo. Gloria a Dios. Pues a Dios, Dios puede hacer su obra grandemente, gloria al Señor. Así que Dios bendiga su obra en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. The first thing I want to know now, do you all firmly believe this with all your heart? Do you raise your hand? And, uh, I just keep your head down while I speak to you. Just Help me to bless the other friends in your law. Now, my brother is standing here, your servant, suffering with this diabetes. Realizing that blood now is becoming sugar. Just a few more turns and a little place in the hand would drop off the feet. And then Satan would have the victory. God's servant would be laid up for the rest of his life for to be sure. Now, no doubt that he's tried many things, uh, but tonight he's not coming crying. Coming tonight to be healed. Uh, I know you hear my prayer. Or are you here to open the eyes of the blind, the deaf and the dumb and the crippled? How much more gives blood of life to my brother? I now rebuke this diabetes. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave a man. May God give double punishment if you hold him on. Come out of him. In Jesus Christ.
suffering now of this trouble, thou art in here to liberate him to make him land. Thou dost not fail, you are from everlasting to everlasting God. The ages move on. You raise up man, take down man. Set up kings and take down, send gifts. You have sent it on high and give gifts to man. Now my brother is suffering. I pray, Father, sincerely with all my heart to appeal. I rebuke this asthmatic cough in the name of Jesus Christ. May it lead him to never return more. But if you tell them what's wrong with it, now remember, we have just come from the doctor. I said, if you do not approach it critically, I'll do what God says. They brought the baby in, put his little hand on mine. Now remember, that was being broadcast over a powerful station. And their doctor was listening in. And they'd been to the doctor day before. I said, yes, sir. The little baby that has a weak kidney, which went in the bed at night. And another thing, it's been bombing up all the food that recently because it's got a spasm in the stomach. <laughs> Brother Randy, the doctor, you hear that? <laughs> there they were. It's just exactly what the doctor told me. So now my wife, she'd come over. I said, the baby inherited the kidney trouble from the mother because she also has pus on the kidneys. And another thing, you've got a real weary, scary feeling all the time. I mean, I said, your age is about 40 years old. You're going through a change of life. And this is exactly what the doctor said. Now he said to me, he put his hand over there. He was the owner, owner of the station. And he, I said, well, you're weary. Here's what you've been thinking about. But for one thing, you think you've got two burkers, but you've got two or three pains in your side. He said, that's just so the doctor listened in. So that's just exactly what the doctor told me yesterday. I said, now here's something that the doctor couldn't tell you. I said, you're halting between two opinions. You think that you're serving God and want to do that for keeping this broadcast like this, but you've got a call and you want to go in the ministry. And I said, the thing that I'd advise you to do is forget about the broadcast and get out there in the harvest field. He threw his arms around me and screamed out right there. And it had to be that that man is a member of Brother Barbara's church here. He's from it. There you are. So you see, it's perfect. God cannot lie. For he's God, is that right? Now it's not me, it's him. Now can't you believe with all your heart? I just bow your head and be real reverent, everyone. Deseamos que todas las personas que siguen su número, el día de mañana vamos a dar curso como viene la serie. Queremos invitar a todas las personas de habla español para que vengan a la mañana a las 10 a tomar más instrucciones también para que tengan la oportunidad de, de tener servicio. El Señor los bendiga. Vamos entonces a cantar un himno y le vamos a pedir en este momento el nombre del Señor. Vamos a cantar el 94 de consolación. Voy feliz al dulce hogar por fe en Jesús. Gloria a Dios. Voy feliz. 